In 7.4, we're going to talk about regular polygons. So we know about polygons, and now we're going to talk about what does it mean if it's a regular polygon. So a regular polygon is both equilateral and equiangular. So those are some fancy words. Equilateral means all sides are congruent, and equiangular means all angles are congruent. So here are some examples of some regular polygons. We've got a triangle. So this triangle would have all sides congruent and all angles congruent. A regular polygon that has four sides, a quadrilateral, is actually going to be a square. So if a quadrilateral is regular and all four sides are congruent and all four angles are congruent, it is a square. Our pentagon, again, this is how we show that all sides are congruent and all angles are congruent. And then this next one has six sides, so it's a hexagon, so we'll go ahead and fill in the same thing. That's a regular hexagon. So now that we know what regular polygons are, we've got some formulas that go along with it. So if you want to find one interior angle of a regular polygon, what you do is you take the sum of your interior angles and you divide it by n, the number of sides. Because the number of sides a polygon has is equal to the number of angles that a polygon has. So another way to think about this is it's 180 times n minus 2, that's your sum of interior angles, divided by n. So if you're trying to find one angle, we have to divide down our sum. That's why we divide by n. All right, one exterior angle. So if it's exterior, we know that our exterior is equal to 360 degrees. That's the sum of exterior angles. So if we take that, we're going to call this capital E, one exterior angle is equal to 360 divided by n, our number of sides. All right, then we also have a theorem called the exterior angle theorem. So the way that this works is if you have a triangle, and you extend one of the sides, that gives you an exterior angle right here where x is. So if you were to add up angle A plus angle B, it's going to equal that exterior angle, angle x. So basically, it's using your two interior angles that are not um, connected to the exterior angle, adding them up, and it's equal to the exterior angle. And it brings in the idea, or it uses the idea of supplementary angles um, for this to be a theorem that works out every single time. So here's a quick example. We have this triangle. We want to find all the angles. We know that angle A is equal to 4x, angle B is equal to x plus 2, and our exterior angle is 7x minus 36. So our exterior angle theorem tells us you can add up your interior angles, so 4x plus x plus 2 is going to equal that exterior angle of 7x minus 36. So we go ahead and we solve for x. First we combine like terms, 5x minus 2 equals 7x minus 36. And then we notice that we have x's on both sides of our equation, so let's go ahead and get those together. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. When you're solving equations, be careful about the little details. See how that's minus 2? So that is a negative 2 that you want to carry down is equal to 2x minus 36. Let's go ahead and add 36 to both sides. So we have 34 is equal to 2x divided by 2 and we get x is equal to 19.
And I just realized I made a mistake. 34 divided by 2 isn't 19, but I know the answer should be 19. So did you guys catch what I did? It's so funny because I said, be careful about bringing down the correct sign and it's all in the details, blah, 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 blah. This is how easy it is to do. Right here, I had a plus 2. And when I rewrote it, I combined my like terms and I wrote a minus 2. I have no idea why I did that. It was not on purpose. So now my mistake is forever in this video, but that's okay. I'm just showing you how easy it is to do that. So this is going to be plus 2, which makes us a positive 2, which makes this 38. And that's how we get x equal to 19. So be careful. Even if you've been doing math for a super long time, you still can make these little mistakes. All right, so we found that x is 19, which is great. They actually asked us to find all of the angles. So now we plug x back in. So the measure of angle A is going to equal 4x. Well, 4 times x is the same thing as 4 times 19. And 4 times 19 is 76. So the measure of angle A is 76 degrees. Angle B... The measure of angle B is equal to x plus 2, or 19 plus 2. And so angle B is 21. And then the last one is, well, I'm not even sure. I would say the measure of angle B, C, but we don't have anything over here. So we'll just, we'll just find the measure of angles A and B and call it good.